Everybody, welcome back to another very exciting episode of the Photoshop Training Hour. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. How's it going? Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I hope that the audio is good. Today's going to be a shorter stream of the Photoshop Training Hour because I'll be on live. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to move over into the Adobe Behance page where I will do compositing for the next two hours. But before I got into that stream, I wanted to do a stream here at the photo training channel on the Photoshop training channel for you guys. So today we're going to talk about placing logos into objects in Photoshop, how to create mockups essentially. I have a few techniques that I'm really excited to show you. By the way, if you want to check me out as soon as this stream is over on Adobe's page, check the link in the description. You'll see the link to the Behance page where we'll be presenting live as soon as I'm done here. So I'm going to stop the stream here and then move over onto Adobe's page. I see a lot of familiar faces in the chat already. Thank you for letting me know that it's loud and clear. Why don't we move over into the first project? So some of you may be watching my new YouTube shorts or one minute Photoshop tutorials. You might have seen this one. So what I want to do in this example is not only showed you what I showed in that one minute tutorial, but also show you other things that I couldn't show in one minute. And also, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to answer them in the chat. So basically, the problem here is that I want to get this logo onto this bag. And I'm sure that you probably have seen other examples where the instructor will basically ask you to transform the selection and then basically distort it on the bag. And, you know, you can definitely eyeball it and maybe get something good, but it doesn't necessarily give you the right perspective. So what I'm going to do in this example is show you how to get the right perspective and also how to turn it into a mock-up so that you can easily swap the logo. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just make a selection around the logo. And I'm doing so by pressing Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and clicking on the logo here. And I'm going to, I'm going to disable the layer, uh, make sure that I copy it first. I don't remember if I copied it. And then disable the selection, create a new layer to work non-destructively. Then you can go into this really cool filter called Vanishing Point. From the vanishing point filter, and I already have the grid there, so you can already see what I'm going to do. But basically, from this grid, you can create these points over the bag, like so. See that? To create the right perspective, and uh, it looks like it's not quite right there. If you get a red line like I did there, that means that the perspective is off, and you need to adjust it until you get a blue line like so and just make sure that it matches the bag as best as possible it doesn't need to be perfect but it is a you know good enough make sure that's a good enough grid then hold control on windows command on the mac and click on the other end to extend it out drag up and again make sure that you have the blue lines and you can just paste control v on windows command v on the mac but watch what happens when you paste photoshop will paste in perspective you can also press Control T, Command T to transform, and you'll see the handles, and you can scale this in. And just figure out where you want your logo to be. I want that one there. And I'm going to paste again. And let me just disable that. And I'm going to just put my logo here on the side, like you see here. Then I'm going to press OK. The logo is in perspective now, but the problem is that this is working destructively and we want to work non-destructively so that we can create a, a template essentially. We want to create a mock-up. So the good thing is that we now know that the logo is in perspective. So we can take this logo again, the original one, duplicate it, place it on top, enable it, change the blending mode to difference, and difference will allow you to see the similarities of two layers. So what I can do now is um, before I transform the layer, I'll convert it. Uh, let me let me change it to normal. I skipped the step. So what you need to do is convert the layer into a smart object first, then change it to difference. And then once it's set to difference, you can distort the layer. So just basically try to match the layer to the distortion because we now know what it what the actual perspective is. So once you get the layer to be pretty much black, it'll be really difficult to get it pixel perfect all the way to black. So try to get it as close as possible, like so. There it is. And I'm going to press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll distort it. Um, Control T, Command T to transform. Right click, select Distort. 
and match it again to the other side. Obviously, I'm going quick uh, quickly here, but make sure that you try to get something that looks closer in your image. Again, the closest it looks to black, the better. The difference blending mode looks at the two layers, and if they're the same, it'll turn black. Um, for the sake of time, we're just going to call this good, even though it's not as good as I would like it. But the point is, now that I have these layers there, I can change the blending mode to normal just so that you can see what we have. And I'll disable the other layers. Let me see. I'll disable, yeah, there we go, this layer. So we have these two layers. Um, there we go. We have that layer and that layer. I can now change the blending mode to multiply and look at how the logo is now over the bag. The cool thing, though, is now I can come in here and change the logo to something else. Let me... Let me just add this PS logo, this Photoshop logo that I have here. So I'm just going to add that in there, disable what I had before, close it and save it. And Photoshop will automatically um, place that logo exactly in the right perspective. Not only that, I can actually go in here now and start making other adjustments. I can bring down the opacity. I can do a, a distort, for example. So if I were to go into, uh, let me just make sure I have this PS layer here into um, file, save as, and I'm just going to call this image. Actually, what I want to do is call it uh, save as copy. So file, save as copy, and call this image this place. And I'll put the word stream so that you see that this is what we did. Stream. Here we go. And I can go now into this PS layer and go into filter, distort, displace, and I can just leave it at 10 over 10 in the horizontal and vertical scale. And I have this displace stream PSD that I just made, press open and notice how Photoshop distorts the logo. And I can do the same thing for the one on the side, do this exactly the same thing. Filter, the first filter will always be the last one that you applied. So I'll hit this place, press OK, and select the same one, this place stream, and you can see how the logo bends to the bag. If you want to make things even more realistic, you can put these two logos into a group and select the bag, Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac, to duplicate it, drag it on top of the group, clip it to the bag, and change the... Um, desaturate the layer. Control shift U on Windows, Command shift U on the Mac, and then you can change the blending mode to something that shows uh, the texture. Something like linear light could work great, and you can bring down the opacity accordingly. And now you have this mock-up, and any time that you want to replace the logo, you can do so by going into the smart object. A smart object is a container that allows you to apply one or more layers and make editable adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. So you can always edit it. So I can go into my uh, PS layer here and I'll have another logo. Let me see what I have here. Um, we'll do the Photoshop training channel logo, for example. There it is. Close it, save it, and Photoshop will automatically apply that logo with all those distortions onto the bag. So it's a fantastic way to work. I highly recommend that you apply this effect to your mockups and create your own, own mockups with your own products that you may have at home. Cool. Why not simply use the multiply blending mode? Well, the multiply blending mode, and I'm guessing you were talking about this right here, right? Linear light. Well, linear light is in this category of blending modes under overlay. These are what is known as contrast blending modes. So it either darkens or brightens an image based on the pixels below. So if the brightness is higher than 50%, it will apply a brightening effect. And if it's darker than 50%, it will apply a darkening effect. So contrast, right? So I want the shadows and I want the highlights. The multiply blending mode is in the darkening uh, blending mode category. In other words, it disregards bright pixels. So see that? See how there's no highlights, no shadows, only, I'm sorry, only the shadows. So no highlights. See that? No highlights, just the shadows. Screen does the opposite. It keeps the highlights, but not the shadows. I wanted something that gave me both, which is why I went into the contrast category and I selected linear light because it gives me some of the 
shadows and some of the highlights. And obviously I would have to fine tune the blending mode accordingly for this logo since it's a little different than the previous two, but we get, you know, some of that texture in there and it looks fantastic. Cool. See Lenny in the chat. How's it going? Mario, Liana, Thomas, thank you so much for joining me. Again, for, if you're just joining, I'm going to be on Adobe Live in just a moment. So as soon as I'm done with this stream, I'm going to head over to uh, Adobe Live in about 10 minutes, actually. I'll be doing photo compositing, uh, compositing surreal photos with me, Jesus Ramirez. And that's going to be on in approximately 15 minutes. I'm going to be uh, joined by my good friend, Anna McNaught. And I'll be showing how to do these crazy uh, composites, out of this world composites in Photoshop. The link is in the description. Make sure that as soon as I'm done here, you head over to the behance.net slash live website so you can see me do these photo composites. Also, I would like to thank our sponsor MSI for sponsoring today's Photoshop training hour. Um, I'm using the MSI Creator Z16 as my laptop. It's a laptop that I use to present, that I use to teach when I'm on the road and to create while I'm uh, while I'm on the road. So make sure that you check out the MSI Creator Z16 laptop. Also, if you're not familiar with MSI, you'll be happy to know that MSI was ranked all the way on top with Apple as the Reader's Choice Laptop Brands of 2021 by PC Mag. So MSI is definitely a reputable brand. I have an MSI monitor here on my right, which is where I'm reading your comments, and also an MSI desktop. So make sure that you check them out. Link is also in the description. Cool. Anik is saying in the chat, Anna is a great artist. Yes, Anna is fantastic. Make sure that you'll check us out. Um, I'll be teaching the question in the chat is what am I going to teach on Adobe Live compositing? We're going to do some compositing work. So make sure that you check that out in about 15 minutes. I'll switch right over to Adobe Live. Um, the next thing I want to show you guys is basically something similar, but how do we get um, this logo onto that bottle? Well, just like before, we want to isolate the logo. In this case, I'm going to isolate it with the quick selection tool. You could have used the um, uh, the select subject, which I guess that's what I'll do since I'm wasting too much time just using the quick selection tool. But select subject should select most of the logo, if not all. There you go. I just it just missed a little piece, um, and that's okay. I'm just going to to um, add to that selection. But anyway, once you have the logo selected, you can create a layer mask and convert it into a smart object. Again, the smart object is going to be that container that's going to hold the information, the layer, that we can always replace in these mockups that we're creating. Now, for this, you can just simply select the Move tool here and then press Control t Command-T to transform, select Warp, and Warp has these custom um, presets and you can select arch and then there's this little icon here that you can just click and drag and you can rotate it accordingly to you know adjust your image so i know i'm, I'm going quickly here it probably doesn't look the best also I, I didn't really um transform it so let me scale that down a little bit i'm not quite happy with the size but you'll get the idea something like that maybe right about here Again, since we're working non-destructive, I can always go back into warp after pressing Control T, Command T to transform and continue adjusting the bend. So you decide what the bend should be for your image and then click on the check mark to commit the changes. Again, we're going to use the same technique. We're going to bring down the opacity just a little bit and I'm going to duplicate this layer on the bottom here, put it on top. Clip it. You can clip by pressing Control Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac. Clipping simply means that the layer that you're on will be clipped to the layer below. In other words, the layer that you're on will be controlled by the layer below when it comes to visibility. So this is what we have. See that? See how that's just the visibility on that layer? Control Shift U to desaturate. And we'll use the same blending mode, uh, Vivid Light, and we can bring down the fill. Again, the reason we're using Vivid Light as opposed to some of the other ones is because I want to create those highlights and shadows in 
in there as you see there. And if it's too strong, maybe linear light. I think linear light might be better in this case. So you adjust it and the way that you need. And again, since we're working with a smart object, I can always come in here and change the logo to something else. I can put in the Photoshop training channel logo. Let me just disable this, close it, save it. And it's uh, very, very distorted. So I don't know if I like that. I think I might have gone a little too far with the distortion here. But, you know, we are working non-destructively. So maybe don't bend the logo so much. Maybe something like that. I guess the irregular shape of that shark didn't really let me see how much I was distorting the logo. So you can distort it, you know, any way that you want. And obviously, when you change the logo, you will need to adjust the fill just so that it looks good according to the image that you're working with. Cool. Let me see. So right now, I got a couple more minutes before I let you go. And remember, I cannot stress this enough. Even though I'm going to leave the stream on this channel, I'm going to go into Adobe Live. The link is in the description. I'll be streaming on how to create th these surreal photo composites um, with my good friend, Anna McNaught. She's going to be hosting me on Adobe Live. I'll be on as soon as I get off here, head over to Adobe Live and I'll, I'll be um, streaming there. So the URL is in the description. So make sure you go there and then you'll be able to comment with me on Adobe Live. Let me see before I let you go how much time we don't have a lot of time. So what I want to show you now is basically what we just did a moment ago, which is if you're working on a, on a mockup for a shirt, what you can do is exactly what you just saw me do. You can select the image, go into file, save as copy, and I'll call this um, displacement stream so we can see what we did. Um, displacement stream, I'll save it. And this time I'm going to do something different um, because, and actually I'll show you why it doesn't work or it doesn't work as good as I want it to work and then what we can do. So convert to smart object, change the blending mode. In this case, I think multiply would work. I don't really need to worry about the shadows and highlights. I just want to erase the highlights so I can have the logo be transparent without the white background. I can bring the opacity down just a little bit so that I don't have a pure black. And now I can go into filter, distort, and I can select um, displace. I'll press OK one more time and I'll select that displacement stream image. When I press OK, watch what happens. See how the edges are not smooth at all? Well, the reason that this is happening is because on my display, displacement stream, there's a lot of texture on this image, on this displacement map, and it uses the luminosity to create the bumps that you see. So if there's a lot of texture, you're going to get those jagged edges. So the way to avoid that is to go into Filter, Blur, and select um, Surface Blur. And Surface Blur will blur the image, but it will keep the detail. See how it's not moving that, look at that hard edge here. Um, let me see if I can, I can't really move it, move it. Yeah, I can. It's not going the way that I want it to, but I, you'll see what I mean. Here on the bottom right, you see how I have a hard edge and no matter how much I blur it, that hard edge stays. So that's what it's doing is blurring out um, what we call low frequencies. Uh, I'm sorry, high frequencies, and it's leaving the low frequencies intact. So we're going to get these very smooth edges. So you can just adjust it accordingly. Um, so we won't blur out the edges, but we will blur out the detail. That's what we want. So something like that. See that the main shapes are still there. Exactly what we want. I'll close it, save it. And then when I go back into my displacement map, I can load that file I just saved and you'll see the difference. See that? See how the edges are now smooth, but the logo is in fact bending. See that? And that's what we want. And what I can do now is do exactly what we've been doing this whole time. Duplicate the layer, Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac. Clip it to the layer below, Control Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac. I'll desaturate it just because I don't want any saturation affecting my logo. And I can use linear light and, or any of the overlay blending modes. Linear light seems to be the one working better for us. And I can just reduce the fill accordingly so that we can get something that looks good. Remember, a shirt's never going to really have pure black. So you can just adjust this accordingly like so and 
obviously in your own project, spend more time fine tuning these smaller details and, you know, just make the adjustments that seem good to your eye. Awesome. So it, it's time for me to get going, but remember I'm going to be on Adobe Live. So right now, head over to Adobe Live. The link is in the description. I'll be teaching how to do photo compositing. We're gonna have a lot of fun there. So link in the description, make sure that you check it out. Also, thank you to our good friends at MSI for sponsoring today's episode of the Photoshop training hour or half an hour. But don't worry, I'm gonna be right back. So head over to Adobe Live, link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching.